welcome back knitters. This is part four of our felted clog knit along. So in this week's video, we're going to seam up the inner sole and then we're gonna attach the outer sole and get everything ready for felting next time. So before we get started with all that, I wanna give a great big welcome and a hearty thank you to Laura and Wendy for becoming new patrons this last week. I certainly appreciate your support. If you wanna know how you can support Pearl Together, head on over to patreon.com forward slash Pearl Together. You'll see what I'm offering as benefits for a small monthly pledge. And if you don't choose to support the channel financially, that's totally fine. Even a thumbs up and subscribing, following me on Instagram and Facebook both in the group and the Pearl Together page, all of that helps. So thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate your support. Let's get started. Okay, before we start in on attaching the second sole here, I'm gonna show you how I'm going to seam up the first sole. Now, I showed you already uh, when you knit this back and forth how I seamed up the back of the heel. This is the one I knitted in the round, but I did show you that last time with the brown, the brown clog that I'm doing as well. So here I have this tail that kind of connects the first part of this. And I'll go ahead and sew as much as I have enough tail for, and then I'll carry on with this. This is the tail that I cut when I left off and I finished row six of the sole. Or actually that's opposite. This is the row six where it attached and I changed the first color, and this is my cast on tail. So either way, um, but here's what I, what I like to do is kind of arrange this so that it's the top of the foot is down and the back is up toward me and everything is matched up evenly. So you'll notice that when you went back and knitted the other way, that kind of, you know, makes that horizontal line up with that horizontal purl and things will tend to line up stitch for stitch if you're careful. So I'm just gonna go in here and do my mattress stitch, where you, which is simply going in from the side and across to the other side and pull that in and then come forward and do the same thing where you're gonna so now I'm on the left side, so I'm gonna stay on the left side and go back in, across to the right, and pull that through. And adjust the length of the tail here. And then I'm gonna come up on the right side and go back to the left, and I'm gonna carry on in this way all the way down. Now I like to do pretty much every stitch, every other stitch, I don't, I don't get, make sure it's not puckering. You wanna make sure everything isn't tight. Now you'll notice this, this is my, where I left off, that's gonna be tucked underneath for now and that's okay. In fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that through the other side so it's out of my way. And then I take these bumps and I just kind of match everything up and go all the way down as, long, as much as you have yarn for. Now if you run out of tail, it's not a big deal. If you run out of yarn, it's totally fine. I'll show you how to join more in. We, I don't tie any knots because I don't want super um, knotty kind of bumps on the bottom of my slipper sole. That might not feel very well. So I'm just going back and forth and I'm gonna make sure that everything's lined up nicely. And I'm just, you know, mattress stitching this back and forth all the way down. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna have enough yarn to finish all the way down to the seam or to the end of down here. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna go through, but then I'm gonna go in across a couple of these garter stitch ridges and I'm just gonna weave this tail in and out back and forth a couple inches and then I'm gonna draw that through. So what'll happen is that tail end will just felt on in there and that's fine. So then I'll trim this off and then I'm gonna do the same thing to join a new piece of yarn that I'm gonna work with. I've just cut another strand that's you know maybe a foot or 18 inches long. It certainly doesn't have to be that long. I just I just had that tidbit left over and I'm just gonna come in down here from where I need it and just do the same thing where I'm gonna weave this in and out. It doesn't have to be pretty or even really. I just wanna secure that so that strand will felt in. And I'm gonna pull that through, being careful not to sew it to the top of my clog, like make sure you're not accidentally tacking it to the top of the foot. I'm gonna pull that through until, you know, the tail is about there. And then I'm just gonna carry on with my mattress stitch until I have the whole thing closed up, okay? So it looks a little crude right now, but like I said before, you're never gonna see any of this when it felt in after we're done with our trip through the washer. So I'm just gonna continue all the way down, closing that, being careful not to tack the top of the foot. So you wanna stick your hand in there from the other side periodically and make sure that you haven't done that. 
When you get to the end, just do the same thing and weave things in and out of a garter stitch ridge and you're done. And then I'll show you how we're going to attach the second sole. So I've, I've turned this around now. So instead of having the toe where I finished weaving that in, I'm back up to the heel. And as the instructions indicate, we're gonna take the smaller diameter needle and we're gonna go around picking up the top loops all the way around. So again, I'm gonna go from the top to the bottom so that I have the correct orientation of the stitches. And I'm gonna go all the way around picking up the top loop. So remember in the last, uh, one of the previous videos, we talked about umbrellas and smiles for garter stitch edges. So there's the umbrella, there's the smile. So I'm gonna go and pick up all the umbrellas now from top to bottom. So everything is oriented correctly on my needle. So you're gonna wanna go all the way around. And to be truthful, I don't count them. You can count them if you want. I think the, inst the pattern tells you how many you should have to pick up per size. I don't count them because I'm not gonna rip anything out and do anything about it at this point anyway. Uh, but I do know how to correct it or fudge it, if you will. <laughs> if it's a stitch or two off, um, I'll show you how we can mitigate that. So. Just as in image one on page five of your pattern, I've done the same thing here. Now my cable is a little too long, but that's okay. We're not even gonna use this right hand needle. We're just That can just hang out and flop around as it is. So I'll apologize ahead of time if there's noise in the video of with that flopping around. I'll try to minimize that as much as I can. So now I'm gonna take the second sole that I've knitted. Now I knitted this one just exactly like the first one. And I'm, I'm basically laying it right up on there next to the first one, making sure that everything is matching up. So these two needles are gonna match up just like we did when we cast off the cuff. And I'm laying, making sure this isn't twisted and I'm gonna have this exactly laying right over it. Okay, I'm gonna use this right hand side. I'm gonna pull that up a little bit, make sure these are matched up on the left. And I know this needle's a little bit smaller, but that's fine. We're just using it as a placeholder right now. It's not gonna have anything to do with the knitting or the gauge. So I'm gonna put this in the first stitch, matching up with the one I just picked up on the second needle, just like we did when we cast off the cuff. And I'm gonna knit that, those two together and pull that through. So I'm having a little bit of trouble around the tripod here, but with me. There we go. Now I'm gonna leave that on the needle this time. We're not gonna cast off right away because we have another row or two to knit if, if you want to have the bumper. If you're doing the plain join, you will cast off now. If you don't wanna have the bumper or that little edge at the bottom of the sole, then you will go ahead and cast off just like we did with the cuff. The reason you might wanna do that now is if you're intending to add um, a suede sole, for example, if you want to put one of those leather soles on the bottom, then you don't want the bumper. Um, I've never actually purchased a set of those and done that, and so I'm going to go ahead and have, I don't know what I have in there, I'm going to go ahead and knit the bumper. So in, in my case, I am going to knit these two together and I leave all the, leave the stitches on the larger size needle. I'm going to leave them on. So I'm just going to go all the way around and do that. Okay, remember I said I wasn't gonna count and I didn't really worry about it yet? So now is when I'll count. So I'm, I have picked up all the stitches and, and I've combined them and I've attached the two soles all the way around past the toe and I'm coming back down the second side. So I have some room here to add or subtract stitches if I need to before I get to the end. So I went ahead and counted what I have all the way around. I'm like at 62 and then what I did was I counted the pairs. So that'd be 63, 64, 65, and so on. So for my, and then I looked at what I'm supposed to have for my size, which would be your stitch counts at the paragraph that says attaching the outer sole. And mine's gonna come out, I think, like one short. So when I get there, um, I'll either pick up an extra, you know, pearl bump that I can make into a stitch or I'll knit two together if I need to. So that's really not a big deal if you need to fudge that. Again, this is all gonna be felted together and it's, it's not a crisis. Now, if you end up having to fudge three or four stitches, then obviously something is gonna be misshapen and you don't have the anywhere near the right count. But if, if I've picked up an extra bump that I shouldn't have, an extra umbrella or a smile that I shouldn't have, I'm not gonna worry too much about one stitch. Okay, I've reached the end of the stitches I'm picking up. Now you can see I have one left here where the split was in the sole and then I have one left on this needle. So I actually did come out okay, but if you didn't, 
if you didn't and you needed to pick up an extra here or pick up an extra back here to make things you know to come out right like I said one one stitch here or there isn't gonna make a whole lot of difference if it's more than that then I probably go investigating why okay so I have all of this uh, picked up now I can get rid of that smaller size needle and have everything together and both of the soles are joined so I'm gonna leave this open for right now that's fine and I'm gonna follow the instructions for the bumper now when you turn, when you have the needles at the heel and also at the toe, it's it's really tight. So sometimes what I'll do is just pull this through and I know that bunches everything up and I'll just loop this around, kind of do a half of a magic loop to lessen that tension. You could also get a longer cable and do a proper magic loop if that works better for you. So I'm just going to now follow the pattern and the instructions for the next round of the bumper. That's really straightforward. Then we're just going to cast off like normal. So do those two rows and I'll show you what mine looks like at the end and how I'm going to sew up the second seam here on the bottom. All right, I'm ready to cast off. I've completed the bumper round and again if you're doing suede soles you won't, you'll just omit this part and you would have already cast off. So I'm just doing this like normal making sure that it's relatively loose. So I'm going to knit two and then I'm just cast doing the standard kind of the standard bind off. That we're all familiar with. So after I finished my bind off I just pulled the last stitch through and I'm just going to sew up this little back end um, just this inch and a half or two inches here before this next this was where I cast off and this is the tail that I left it long on purpose so I'd have enough to sew this up. So I've only left a short tail here when I cast off just because I only need it just to go this far. So in the same way, I'm gonna do this mattress stitch just like I did before on the inner sole. And I'm just gonna go along and tack this together back and forth until I get to that next tail. Now you can see how this matches up perfectly with where we turned where the pearl row is and it turns and goes the other direction. So I'm just matching everything up. Those pearl bumps are matching up just fine. So when I get to this section here where the other tail begins, I'm just going to secure this because it's the bottom of the the slipper. I'm just going to secure this a little bit better by going back up. And then I'll weave in this end just like we have before. So that's easy enough. Back and forth, up and down a few times and pull that through. Now I'll trim that in just a moment. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how I want to close this second sole at the same time kind of tacking the two together because when we felt this I want this to be secure and I want it to be sandwiched together with the inner sole and not have any shifting between the two soles. I want them to felt evenly together. So because this tail comes off the bottom I'm going to start on the bottom and go up from the bottom to this other side. Now, just like we did before when we sewed the inner sole, we're going to do this every inch or so, but at the same time, I'm going to go underneath here and pick up that inner strand. Just, you know, one of the bumps so that I'm sewing the two soles together at the same time I'm closing the outer seam. So I do that pretty much every other stitch. I'll go in and grab that lower one. So if that works for you, you do it on the right side. And I'm doing this every so often, like probably every, if you look at these pearl bumps, I've, I'm here, I'd probably do every other one. You can, if you have the yarn to spare, go ahead and do every one. I'm just doing every other one and I found that to be sufficient. And when I go underneath here, I just try to grab both of those and then I come back up into the left side. So this is a little bit awkward. I usually hold it on my lap or hold it, you know, a little differently around the tripod so I apologize for the awkwardness of me showing you this and it doesn't have to be super perfect um, but this is my system how I like to tack the inner and the outer soles together just make sure that when you're picking this up that you're getting the actual center like you're not you're not grabbing this row or this row you're getting the actual center ridge when you're when you're going down to pick up that inner sole so I just carry on like that all the way to the end that worked out just about right. I have, I don't know, four or five inches of yarn left and I'm just gonna go in under all of these rows and do my back and forthing in a garter stitch row to weave this in 
and then I'll cut whatever is extra. I just wove that in, I don't know, a couple, two or three inches. I'll cut off this tail and it's all gonna felt together nicely. Okay, I'll go back and cut off this one now as well. All right, we're ready for the washer. Okay, as always, if you found these videos helpful, I'd really appreciate the thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all of those things. I'll see you next week when we'll do the felting. Thanks for watching.